Burrow and Richardson currently among the favorites to win comeback player of the year. That according to ESPN Bet. Burrow, the second favorite, seeks to be the second player to win comeback player of the year twice. Joining Chad Pennington. I'm not sure that's a list you want to be on, but either way, if you get player of the year, come back twice. <laughs> you did something good. Uh, so the NFL season now 13 days away. We're going to play fill in the blank. Now, I'm not going to say blank. I'm just going to give you the question. So, Bart, I'll start with you. The quarterback to have the best comeback season will be. Aaron Rodgers, um, the reports out of Florham Park about what he's doing. You know, you talk about the joint practice with the Giants, his connection with, with Garrett Wilson, who looks like he's going to be, you know, Aaron Rodgers' new Devontae Adams. You know, the ball's coming out. And this is arguably, in my opinion, the best football team that Aaron Rodgers had since he won the Super Bowl. It's a talented roster. A lot of credit needs to be uh, given out to Joe Douglas. All right, Dan Graziano, you're up. The first wide receiver contract standoff to end will be CD Lamb in Dallas it has to be I mean this is the one that's felt like it's the closest to done all along uh, they've had constant conversation Cowboys are working on this one and still hoping to get Dak Prescott signed to an extension before the start of the season but this is a more urgent matter as CD Lamb has one year left on his deal and uh, and and definitely has uh, a desire for a new deal hasn't been a training camp they'd like to get him in the building much more of the Cowboys in their season ahead without CD Lamb and Bart because I like you you get two oh, thank the you. Steelers starting quarterback week one should be it should be Justin Fields because he represents the future. You know, you talk about, you know, the Steelers with the bad pick of Kenny Pickett. You know, you know, Justin Fields is a player that has a, his whole career in front of him. He has to take care of the football. He has to be decisive. He has to do that right there. Use his legs, be a dual threat to give them, you know, to help move the chains. Yeah, and you look at this Steelers quarterback battle, it really is the last in the league as we approach week one. Mike Tomlin was asked specifically if Russ is still in the pole position. He said yes. He'll start in the preseason finale Saturday night against Detroit. Meanwhile, uh, our Stephen A, well, he was feeling danger, Russ. I'm going to say it on national television. Russell Wilson, you're beginning to piss me off. Somebody <laughs> got to say it, so I'm going to say it. The Denver Broncos is willing to eat nearly $38 million to get rid of you. And you sitting there fighting for a starting job with Justin Fields. You ain't fighting for no starting job with Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson or somebody. It's Justin Fields you're starting for a job with. You wearing the black and gold now. You a stealer. I said it last year. I'm going to say it again. The only damn thing good that you brought to Denver was Sierra. That was it. You fight for your career. Act like it, Russell Wilson. Act like it. That'll take care of the flybys. Hmm. Hawk took care of his internet. In the meantime, he joins us now on Get Up. Hawk, happy Friday. Good talking to you. Uh, you heard Stephen Hayes. <laughs> I mean, he, his opinion's out there. We know how he feels in this situation. Do you think Russell Wilson's NFL future is on the line in Saturday's preseason game? I feel like NF Russell Wilson's future as an NFL starting quarterback is on the line throughout the rest of this training camp and specifically this last preseason game. Look, and I don't think it has anything to do with what Russell Wilson is going to do. I think it has everything to do with what Justin Fields does or doesn't do. Russell Wilson has been in the NFL a long time. He has won a lot of games. We've seen him at nauseum when the bullets are flying. To think that you have to figure out what just or what Russell Wilson is as a quarterback in a preseason game is ridiculous to me. Now, if he comes out and he plays well and he moves the ball and he has a, a solid completion percentage and he executes the offense, he's fine. But if Justin Fields comes out and he gives the splash plays that Tomlin is looking for with his legs, with his arms, he has zero turnovers, he has command of the huddle and getting the play calls in and out. He makes a smart football decision as a quarterback, whether it be clock management or in his execution of the offense. Then Russell Wilson has something to worry about because what they're looking for from Justin Fields is for them to for him to show them something that makes them say like, uh oh, this guy could be the leader of this football team. And it has not happened yet. Otherwise, Russell Wilson would not still be in pole position. Yeah, it's the conversation whether this is this quarterback competition that close or is it the fact that no one has gone up and grabbed it. And right. Ross, what are you hearing from inside the building of really where this thing stands? So all along, the Steelers' thought has been like Russell Wilson, the established starter, you know, will be our starter this year. We'll try and win games with Russell Wilson, and then 
you know, work on Justin Fields, try and iron out the aspects of his game that still need work, and maybe he's somebody uh, for the future. Now, Russell gets hurt day before camp starts. This week is the first time he's been able to practice fully without any limitations. So what they want to see tomorrow is really anything from the offense, right? Like 13 drives this preseason with Fields or Wilson in there. They've come away with points on one of them. Uh, Russell Wilson uh, has to show that he can deliver in a game setting what he's delivered for them in practice, what they saw all through the offseason. If he does that, they'll be fine. Because you guys know, I mean, like, they're not just evaluating on these three preseason games. Like, they, they've had months of practice with right. these guys to evaluate. So I think if, if Fields starts week one, it's because either Russell's still hurt or Russell looks incompetent tomorrow and Fields looks all of a sudden like he's solved all the problems that they've been working on with him all offseason. It's a little far-fetched at this point. You heard Hawk say it a minute ago. Yeah. You said they, they just need him to do something. Graziano alluded to it. He's a known commodity. We know what Russell Wilson is at this point of his career. So you said that you think Justin Fields should be starting, but on the flip side of that, what does Russ need to do to earn this job come Saturday. He needs to show poise, leadership within the pocket, right? When those guys, those other 10 guys are in the huddle, they need to believe in, in what they're in, in the play caller. And that's what it's about because you, you got two quarterbacks that doesn't have any um, sweat equity with the organization, right? right. right? So that nobody believes in them. Nobody knows what happens when adversity hits. Will he be able to calm the storm down? That's what's about being a leader and what's about being a quarterback of an NFL football team is all about. They've had some health issues, but they think they'll be fine there. The other thing uh, to keep in mind, they didn't game plan for last week's game. It's just, you know, just ex so if the defense was game planning to stop them, then obviously they're going to look bad. But I think that's the key with Russell Wilson. You say we know what he is at this point in his career. But do we? Memories are short in this league. Like that Steelers team is loaded with dudes that have only been in the league one or two years. Right. And I've only known Russell Wilson as kind of not a very good quarterback, which is what he's exactly. been the last couple of years. So uh, he has to do tomorrow matters for the Steelers, if only uh, for the purpose of they can go into the season with some confidence about their offense. And I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to say, hey, look, Russell Wilson, Seahawks, that, that, that's gone. That's and how much, and how much how Broncos much? see Russell could be more of the mean. Well, how much that's of that good. was Pete Carroll protecting him because they knew exactly what they were. Remember, for years, we're like, let Russ cook, let Russ cook. And all that was about him, you know, playing off schedule and getting out of the pocket and throwing the moon ball. You can't play, you can't do that. You cannot schedule around, you know, um, you know uh, plays where, it, where it's just off schedule. I need my offense on time. Right, for every good play you have, you're going to have five or six bad plays, and it's going to put the offense behind the sticks. Hawk, I want to ask you this, because if it, if it is this close and, and neither player has gone up and grabbed it, could it be as simple as the coaches don't have to make the selection because you're going to see who the team gravitates towards as we head to week one? Absolutely. And I, and I think they probably have already given that indicator throughout practice. To you guys' point, like, look, especially in today's game where there's only three preseason games, they're not making these decisions solely based off of five drives. Yes, it's a confirmation or a, a red flag for what they've seen throughout training camp and through the offseason. And the team understands. I'm sure that they feel a difference with their quarterbacks this year than they did with Kenny Pickett a year ago, even up until this point. So for the coaches, they're saying Russell Wilson is in pole position from the very beginning. I don't think they would be blowing smoke at this point in the season. They are wanting Justin Fields to do something and splash something. Otherwise, Russell Wilson is a known commodity. I, I don't want to now undo what we've seen from Russell Wilson. I don't think people were protecting him. He's got nine Pro Bowls. He's a top 20 passer in yards. He's, you know, fourth in QB rating or, or passer rating in NFL history. Like, he was a good quarterback at times. Now it's was. a question of what is left yeah. and what the Steelers need to take the next step. You're going to tell me. First one, is it an overreaction to say the Cowboys are sabotaging their season by not paying C.D. Lamb? It's an overreaction. I think when you use the word sabotage, it often is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that he'll be there week one. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I'm not concerned about him not getting his deal done. I guess the only concern at this point is we're close enough to the start of the season. Like, is he going to be fully ready to take on a full workload in week one? Uh, and if not, um, that's going to make it tough to beat the Browns. That's it, Cowboys. Feel free to take your time. We're not getting close. <laughs> Number two, the Giants have the worst quarterback situation in the NFL. I think that's an overreaction. I mean, I think I think the Raiders uh, obviously are not in love with what they have at quarterback at the moment. I can think of another 
couple of teams. The Giants situation is not ideal, but at least they have the flexibility to move on and do something new after this season. Uh, and Daniel Jones had him in the playoffs two years ago. Like, that's not nothing. An eternal optimist, Dan Graziano Friday. Eternal optimist, as all the Giants fans know from my time covering the team. And finally, if I said Nick Sirianni is coaching for his job this season, you would say? Uh, it's not an overreaction. I, I think, I think pressure is intense in Philadelphia. They were in a Super Bowl a little over 18 months ago. I, I, and then it all fell apart last year after a 10 and one start. If it falls apart again, uh, there's no one left to fire because they already got rid of the coordinator. So you would think Sirianni would be in trouble. But I, I, don't, I, I don't think it will. But yes, if they have another season like they had last year where it ends that way, I could see him being in a lot of trouble. Yes. Well, maybe the pressure will mount up because they made another move yesterday with some sneaky big news coming out of the <laughs> NFC East. Eagles trading with the commanders to acquire wide receiver Jahan Dotson. Dotson, a first round pick in 2022 now lines up next to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith to give Philly a third receiver. Here's Dan Orlovsky on the move. I think this is now giving Philadelphia the best wide receiver, wide receiver trio in football. This was a really good offense to begin with. If Dotson just replicates what he did, which is 50 or so catches and 500 yards at that number three wide receiver spot, I don't know of anybody in the NFC that can line up and play man-to-man -man coverage against those four pass catchers. And the fourth that Orlowski was talking about, Dallas Goddard, the tight end. Uh, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get your thought on that in a minute because you're not big on that. But I, I do want to get Hawk in here first just to <laughs> Hawk, he's a immediately receiver. react. What, is he right? Are the Eagles the best receiving core in football? Absolutely. I, I think he is right. I mean, obviously, you can make a, a case for the Houston Texans as well as the Chicago Bears. But when you look at, again, to Dan's point, what you see from Jahan Dotson, where, yeah, is he a number two? Is he a number one? Probably not. But when you look at him and say, well, can this guy be in the slot exclusively and take a little bit of attention away from A.J. Brown and Devonta Adam or Devonta Smith on third down, he can absolutely do that. When you look at what Jahan Dotson brings to the table as a wide receiver, it's speed, it's quickness, it's ability to win in one-on-one. -on -one. And that is different from the outside to the inside as someone who played almost exclusively in the slot. Like, his skill set is built for that. And what the Eagles are asking him to do is far less than what the uh, commanders were asking him to do as a first-round pick. So I think this actually could be one of those match made in heaven, you know, if, if Jalen Hurts has the season that we expect. All right, so Hawk has me sold, Graziano. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you, on the other hand, are, are I'm not. skeptical because, like, they, they got him from a team in their own division, right? Like, like if, he's the, if he's that much of a, you know, kind of a difference-making kind of player, is Washington going to trade him to a team they got to play twice a year, right? So, look, I, I, I think I, I love Orlovsky uh, and his passion, but you got to put Houston's three wide receivers ahead of this group and, and possibly the Bears, uh, as, as Hawk mentioned. Dotson hasn't proven it. And, and like the Eagles, the, the, the third round pick for a number three receiver feels like a little bit of a high price. Maybe, maybe Hawk is right. He knows more about wide receiver than I'll ever know in my life. But I, I feel like the Eagles kind of maybe stretched a little bit for this one. I, if they have the best receiving group in the league, I don't think it's because of the move they made yesterday. Yeah, and the in division thing was the one that was a little yeah. bit suspect. Why would you trade a guy that you feel can be productive against a team you're going to play twice a year? That to me was a little bit of a red flag, but. Bart Scott will play along. Yeah, you, well, I mean, what do you think? Well, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I, I'm just asking what in the giant wick is going on here? What type of marker does um, Howie Roseman have that he's, you know, that why would you trade a, a talented player like that within the division? And what this allows them to do is to play basically out of um, 11 personnel, mm -hmm. right? We call it three wise. And you, know, you talk about the difference in the pieces together. Sometimes the whole, the, the, the sum of the parts is be better than the whole. Um, when you think about the ability with Saquon Barkley there as well, and Saquon Barkley, you know, him both thanks a lot, you know, average five yards a pop out of that personnel grouping. And you talk about what this, is, what this is allowing is being able to create more space, mm -hmm. right? And it's just creating more space because now everybody has to deal with it. Chan Gailey used to do this a lot. Chan Gailey used to run out of that same personnel grouping, but he ran power runs because now you have to figure out how you're going to match up. Are you going to go sub on first down? Or are you going to go big sub on first down? Then they're going to run power runs, you know, out of a, out of that personnel group. And if you go with the nickel, then they run the power runs. If you go out and you put the linebacker out there or the big safety, then now they spread you out and they just, you know, death by a thousand paper cuts because he has so many options. So but when Hawk said something, maybe that, that Dotson will be played better from the slot. Maybe that's more comfortable. What, then why didn't the commanders figure that out? There, yeah. Look, I, I think, look, it's a different 
regime, right? Coaching staff and front office and the sure. one that drafted him in the first round two years yeah. ago. So maybe he just wasn't their cup of tea. But again, the, the red flag is you traded him to a division rival. Yeah. Like if you thought he was going to make a difference for them, you probably don't make that move. There are but, other teams out there looking for wide receivers. But maybe you don't know how to use them because, you know, maybe. you know, Hawk is talking about moving him to the, to the slot. But what if you put him out there at the Z or the X and you put, he can AJ, play that. And you put A.J. Brown at the slot and you move him like the C.D. Lamb, getting him matched up against yeah. your third best corner, which is usually the nickel. But that nickel is what, 185 pounds? 